Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the start of the tank reviews for the new Japanese TD line, starting with the Type 5 right here in Garage, the Honey 3. Although down here it says Type 3 Honey 3 times 3. So there's a there's a lot of 3s going on in there. I think there should have been one more for numerology or however the heck that goes. Anyway, it is a TD and if you skip the rest of the review and you just went with it's a fairly bog standard tier 5 TD much like the rest of them with a with a nice penetration gun I think you'd be you'd be pretty close to the truth but we're gonna take a look at it I'll give you a little bit of gameplay I didn't play a whole bunch of games once you get to the level where I am in terms of how many tanks you have and you have so many times fives and times twos and you get the the premium times thing and all of that really the grinds just go really quickly anymore so it only took me about eight battles anyway to get through this thing as with most of the tanks I've done in the recent past, I did unlock all of the modules and then went from the modules to the next tank. So it wasn't a full grind through all of the modules. That just hurts. Although the bummer there is I'm out of free experience. I'm on the tier eight right now. And so the nine is going to be a module grind. And maybe we'll do some, we'll do some content on that and see how painful that is at tier nine. I think I already know. <laughs> I think I already know. So the Honey 3 is the Tier 5. We're going to take a look at the vehicle details. What does Wargaming say about it? At the beginning of 1944, Hitachi was developing a tank destroyer. Small series TD based on the Type 97 Chiha tank. Uh, it had, instead of rotating turret, a stationary welded cabin was mounted on the chassis. Combat weight reached 17 tons. Didn't reflect its mobility. A total of 31 vehicles were produced. However, due to Japanese capitulation, these tank destroyers never saw combat. So there you go. It was developed, it was produced in a small run, and it never saw combat. Interesting with the Japanese tanks in general, they tended to be much lighter based on where they were fighting. A lot of jungle stuff, things like that. So obviously over in China, you could get a heavier tank, but they really did rely on lighter. And based on their industry capability and all of that, uh, very interesting in terms of their tank development. A little bit underdeveloped, to be quite honest, for most of World War II. But this is World of Tanks, where we can go ahead and take a small run tank and put it in the in the game, and we can have a lot of fun. So there it is. Fairly tall. That is going to hurt its camo just a little bit. You can see it's got a lot of flat spaces. We'll get to its armor profile in a minute, but I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't got none. All right? It ain't got none. You can see the crew. It's got a commander, gunner, driver, Radio operator separate, a loader. Let's take a look at the tech tree because I think there's something important you want to know here. Once you get to the G row, there are six crew members. So the Honey 3 has five. You're going to add another loader when you get to the G row. That being said, depending on how much you like futzing around with crew, whether you're going to keep it the, the tier five and leave the five crew there and make a new crew, I don't know how you're going to go about it, but if you're worried about moving a full crew through, you might want to just skip the Honey 3 and go to the G row where you have six crew and it's the same all the way to the tier 10. I like to own all the tanks. I like to play all the tanks to some extent anyway. So I went ahead, started this crew. When I got to the G row, I just chucked on another radio operator or sorry, yeah, two radio operators. That would be crazy. Another loader. Break, break. Another option there is to, and this is what I did, I had a bunch of books from Battle Pass where I built up the crew in the Honey. If I had it to do again, I would probably just go ahead and grind the Honey with the crew, just build the crew and grind it. When I moved it to the G row and added the other radio operator, then I would have chucked the books at him. Chuck the book at him. Or see what I'm saying there? That way, that second loader gets the option of getting a lot of the books. There's lots of ways to, to skin that cat. So have at it my friends that is what it looks like and obviously it comes off of the chi hay so you're gonna have to grind that if you need the experience otherwise you're going to use free experience okay what else we got let's take a look at the armor profile on this thing well it's all green my friends now this is obviously against its gun which is rocking right here 150 penetration and when you're talking uh, 25 millimeters of armor there almost isn't an angle other than ex very extreme where it's not going to just punch right through that it just it doesn't have any <laughs> it doesn't it just doesn't have any there you go that's the whole armor profile <laughs> 
Awesome. The way I set mine up, I had a rammer, I had vents, I had an IA. I really do like the IA over the GLD and even the vert stab. I know that's heresy and I'm sure a lot of people will be very upset with that. What that did for me though, if we take a look at my setup over here and my firepower stuff or at least my stats, it gives me with this setup right here, a 1.59 aiming time, a 0.3 dispersion, which is actually pretty good, and 2,255 average DPM. So let's do a comparison with four of kind of the standard, and these are all tech tree, because obviously this is a tech tree, type 5 TDs. Now it was it was uh, compared by Wargaming to the Stug, so we have the Stug 3 Tech Tree version here. I threw the Semivente on there because it's one of the newer TDs that's come out, so we'll see how this one stacks up to another relatively new release. And then the Panzer Fizzle, which is kind of renowned for its penetration and firepower, even if it's a gigantic TD and very soft, much like the Honey. So taking a look at the numbers, the average damage for the Honey is 130. So it's comparable to the rest of these. They're all within a, a close range, although the Simavente is 20 less. The penetration is where this thing shines. And I will tell you, the standard pen, because these Japanese TDs use an AP and a gold AP, okay? Or an improved or what special or whatever the term is that they use these days. So it's not APCR heat. It's actually an AP round with more penetration. And it goes up to 192, I believe it is, which is a lot. Also, too, and in addition to, the standard pen in general on all of these Japanese TDs is quite high for standard pen. It's even with the Stug 3 over here. Rate of fire is really fast. The gun loading uh, pretty quickly, although not quite some Avente level right there. If we scroll on down, what does that do for us DPM-wise? You can see that we have 1984 with the Ho Ni, which is on the low side, it's a little bit better than the Stug, not quite as fast as spitting the rounds down range for the Simavente or the Panzer. Although remember, it's got more penetration than both of those and, and a little more damage, and a little less than the Panzer, but more than Simavente. All right, so these are the games we play in terms of balancing the tank. The standard pen, remember I got mine down to 0.3 with my setup, is 0.33, which is comparable to the rest. Simavente is a little bit derpier it is rocking the higher dpm and that is why and not quite as good as the stug at 0.32 it has minus five gun depression one of its weaknesses is you have to be a little bit careful about ridges and how you fight with this thing although it's not like you want to go ahead and go hold down and try to challenge them to shoot your superstructure because they will and you will lose that fight this is a try to hide and not be seen and then end game move around and try to out dpm things okay kind of tank 1.63 aim is nice in there. Uh, there's the armor as as advertised. So there's a big difference between it and the Stug. The Stug actually kind of has some armor at the tier down there. Not great, but it will shrug some things off. This thing rarely will and already will eat its lunch. Faux show. Sure. Come down here to the mobility. It's not bad at 40. I did. I guess I didn't run a turbo on this. I thought I did, but I don't think I did have any games in the turbo. I thought about it, but 40 seemed good enough at tier 5, and that's right in line with everything, except for the Panzer Fizzle. I don't know if you knew this, but this thing's actually pretty fast at 60, so it can reposition, but this is okay. This is enough to get around. No huge deal right there. The specific power is decent at 16, so it, it will get up and go. The next one, the tier 6, is atrociously slow. Even though it shows about the same top speed, it has horrible specific power. So pay attention to that number when you're looking at mobility. It's very important for how fast it accelerates and how well it goes up hills. So this thing is, is okay. Come down here to the concealment. It's decent, not quite Simavente level. Remember, I mentioned the Simavente is very low slung, and that seems to be a large part of the calculation for Wargaming is how tall the tank is or not tall in case of the Simavente. Stug is also fairly low slung as well, so it has better so you're only looking at 18. So it is a, a kind of camo sniping guy, but doesn't have really fantastic camo sniping. That's going to make you want to play a little more of the vision games, vice just relying on camo. So there you go. Those are by the numbers. What do we have? We have a soft tank, a decently mobile TD that has pretty good DPM and really nice penetration. You dab two, you get up to like 192, which is fantastic. So you're going to be able to handle any sevens that you might see in terms of having a chance to pin, I'm not saying you're going to rush up and crush them, but at least you'll have some chances to penetrate and get shots down range.
So we already covered my setup right here. I was running 12 of the AP. If we just really quickly, it's 150 for the regular as noted. The, the armor piercing special round, I guess, is 194. I guess I said 192. Velocity is not bad. It's 900 and 1,000 for that tier. It's okay. Somewhere around 1,000, it becomes much more comfortable. Anything much lower than 1,000, now you're starting to talk about softballs and difficulty and lead fire. Obviously, higher is even better, but that's not bad. The high explosive round, not much to talk about. only goes to 175 and only has 40 penetration right there. Let's see how I did. Like I said, I didn't have very many battles. I ended up with a 38% win rate, which is... Not so much. What I win? Two? Three. So three wins, four defeats, and one draw. 62.59 on the hits. A little low, actually, for the accuracy. One thing you find out, especially at low tiers, uh, because everything's kind of moving around and it's a little bit crazy a lot of times, in addition to the fact that this thing fires so fast, I find that my hit rate is a little bit lower at the lower tiers with the faster firing guns because you tend to fire a bunch more in there. Damage ratio is good, though, at 4.12. Destruction at 5.67 is really good. Armor use, look at that, 0 0.09. Yeah, it just doesn't have any armor. 1,140 is really pretty good for a Tier 5 TD. Let's find another one in here. 60 FT was at 733. The IKV I had at 643. So low sample size, but I was definitely doing damage. Just the winds were not coming out of it right there. And that's pretty much it, guys. Not a whole lot to say. I did have a maximum damage of 1,676 and four kills. I think that's the one that I'm going to show you in terms of uh, gameplay just really quickly. So that's a wrap on the stats and all that good stuff. Let's take a look at some gameplay, and then we will come with my final thoughts on the Type 3 Honey 3 Japanese Tier 5 TD. All right, let's go. The Way O oh, the Ninja. Let's set this up as we get going. For my colorblind friends, alrighty, there we are, and off we go. So we're gonna go hang out over in the bushes and do the sit back and snipe ninja thing. I am top tier. That's not true. We do. Oh, there's two sixes. I didn't even notice that. Two. There's two sixes in here. Some fives and some fours. Now you're gonna love it if you're seeing fives and fours in this thing because it will just spit damage downrange. And I I find at this tier a lot of times it's the little D DPM monsters that really do well. The more armored tanks don't necessarily, because in general, at this tier, the penetration so overcomes armor most of the time that it's even less useful than it is at higher tiers. There are a couple exceptions in terms of tanks. Obviously, if you tier, see a tier 7 with this, it's a bigger deal, but if you're seeing 5s and 6s, uh, a couple, a bounce or two, just slap it over to your 2, and you're dropping 194 pin on guys, and it basically armor doesn't exist other than crazy angles, things like that. Misses, etc. All right, so we're pu push up here. I don't have a whole lot of help. So initially, I'm kind of moving up here a bit to see what's going on. I know I can use these bushes to get a little bit closer, and I'm hoping to catch out anyone who's being a little bit uh, uncareful. There's no real scouts per se in this game. I guess the Covenator to some extent is one. I, we have an ELC BIS, so technically yes, but at tier five, scouts are kind of more like just a medium tank, to be quite honest. We we'll lose a St Stug B right off the bat. So I figured I'd go a little bit forward here and try to be the spotter. That being said, and I did not mention it, you can see that its view range is atrocious. I don't know if it's actually quite that bad. There is a bug right now with the current release where the visual part of your view range is incorrect. But I don't... That may be... Yeah, so here comes their scout. So I'll back out until I get a nice dark bush, and we'll just do the old DPM thing. Bang, bang, bang. And just like that, we nuke this guy. And we've got another guy hiding out behind him. Like, where is he? Always oh, right behind the Hulk. There we go. Hulk smash. A little bit of a miss. So we took out their scout. That's nice. Notice when he pushed up and I got the light on him, if it was me indeed, I think it was, yes, because I have the spotting damage. Uh, I backed up so that I could make the bush in front of me dark or opaque, and that way I could shoot without being spotted unless they had something crazy like a CVS or such. Now that might get me spotted. I think it did, actually. No, it didn't. All right, great. So there's a Stug. Shoot that guy. Notice how fast it shoots. We'll just sort of switch around and take shots as we have them. Guys are diving down into the ditch. Take some shots at the RBFM. Doesn't have a whole lot of armor. Take another shot where when he is dark. 
one more for GP and we'll back up. Now you notice I've lost my spotter and then of course we have one more who decides to go now. <laughs> this is this is tier five and four and, and six, my friends, is just how it be. He kind of sneaks up and I thought, well, if he just dove into the bottom there, he'd be in good shape, but he's trying to use the hulks as cover. Pretty quickly, he's going to get spotted, I would imagine. But we're already up to 699 damage, 503 assists, just playing carefully as a change for me. A little bit of a change, you know. Instead of just going all crazy on him. I'm leaving that up to my teammates today. So Chihei's kind of hiding out. Clearly he's not seen or he'd already taken a few shots. I don't see any shots coming in and he didn't get He's not being hit. Eventually someone would hit him if they see him. Even if he's hiding behind a couple tanks there. I'm thinking about the one guy that's in the ditch right there. Did they revert the markers? They must have. Or is the replay only incorrect? There was some complaints about the markers moving to the other side. I can't wrap my mind around that. We're going off onto a tangent here. I I never could understand what people were complaining about with that. All right, so we found another Ho Ni 3, Chi 3, number 3, version 3 up there. And there's that DPM, guys. You know, just boom, 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 and just like that, he's gone. Now we got a Matilda. We can even handle a Matilda without gold. It's just working like a champ. Of course, I switched to it because I know it's a Matilda. And if anything's going to bounce me out there, it would probably be him to some extent. So we've dabbed two. I need more skill. 1,275. That goes without saying, by the way. Here he comes, sneaking around. I probably could push in, but the other thing I know about a Matilda is, and let's just talk about that for a second. That thing fires quick, the Matilda. And while he's only doing, what, 90, 180, whatever it is, 75, something really small. Notice my hit points, and I didn't mention it on the stats, are only 420. So you just don't have a lot of hit points to give. In fact, there are derp guns, say on like the T6, M6 or whatever, yeah, T6 medium and some of the other derps that are basically going to more or less one-shot you. So he comes in there. We'll just nuke this guy with 900, 100, 900, 900 pen. 194 pen is just going to lull pen through most of the stuff. And like I said, the the as far as armored tanks go, the Matilda is pretty much it at this tier, right? One of the more heavily armored tanks. And this thing just ate its lunch with all that penetration. So we're at 1,454, probably a little higher because I at least had one blind shot in there. I think we actually tracked down somebody. This is what I always talk about, folks. You get to the end of the game, you've preserved your hit points, drive in, find somebody to shoot, get a few more hit points out of it. I guess I don't get anything out of this unless I find the Sioux. I think I... Do I find the Sioux? My name is Sue. How do you do? There it is. Uh-oh. An actual bounce from an angle. He's going to nuke me. Nope, he missed. And we take him down. For four kills, artillery getting the last laugh. Let's just, there you go. Four kills, 1,600 something hit points, as I noted earlier, 518 assists. Not a bad little game for a tier five. Really worked out when you have an opportunity to TD with that much firepower relatively, to sit behind a bush and just shoot guys that were hanging out in the open. It's, it's gonna be a good day, my friends. And when you're talking only 150 pen, it's gonna be a 19 or 20 shot kind of day to get up to 1,600 or so hit points. So there you go. Let's wrap this up with the Honey 3, the Type 3 Honey 3. Well, all right. I just wanted to clear one thing up. You can't see all the numbers down below there, but this thing is at 310 view range. The Simavente is at 350, which is kind of reasonable at the tier. The Stug is low too at 310, so that's why the view range was so horrible. On my particular setup, that gives me a whole 317. <laughs> now, if you have the vision stuff and whatnot with your vents, although the vents are helping me in terms of this one, but if you have the vision stuff on your radio operator and your commander to get a little better, but good lord, 317, so that circle was valid, absolutely horrible view range. You're not going to do a whole lot of spotting for yourself. There is a possibility there to think about chucking binocs on it. I happen to think the other equipment's more important that I have right there, and some other pieces would be better than binocs, but if you really wanted to try to do some of your own spotting or increase your capability of spotting a late game while stationary, you might think about chucking binoculars on it. At that, at that tier, it doesn't hurt you too much. So if you stuck with me through all of this, I'm going to re-say what I said earlier. It's a fairly bog standard tier 5 TD with a couple tricks. 
Uh, number one, it's decent mobility, not great, but it can get around. It's decent camo, but the big thing this thing brings to the game, and I, this actually plays out through the rest of the TDs in the line, is really good standard pen and pretty decent gold pen on a, just an AP round. All right, but it's really the standard pen that seems to shine on this line. A lot of times when you hit two, you get more, but not as much as, say, maybe a heat round and some of the other tanks. But this one's sitting at 150, and then especially this one at tier five with a 194 with its gold pen is really good. So not a bad little gun on an okay-ish chassis is essentially what you've got with the tier five. All right, guys, let me know what you think of the Honey. Did you skip it? Did you play it? Do you like it? Do you even play tier five? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for coming by and checking out the video. We will see ya.